Can you uh, <clears throat> give us a quick uh, one minute spiel on the Fuji Film X100V? The X100V is the coolest camera ever made and definitely better than a Leica M6. All right, cut that, cut that. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Chris Chu. I am a documentary street photographer and a hardcore film photography addict. So let's talk about the Fuji system. It has a soft spot in my heart actually because uh, I started photography in 2010 and around 2014, I kind of stopped. I took a long break because that was when I was going through my first breakup ever. I bought the Fujifilm X-T2 and that was the camera that revived my passion for photography. And I had so much fun using it because it was just perfect. I mean, the top two things that Fujifilm is known for are its colors and its ergonomics. And the same goes with the Fujifilm X100V. So I totally understand why it's so popular right now. And if any of you are going through a breakup, it's gonna be okay. And hopefully this camera helps with your photography. I'm not going to lie, I wanted to hate this camera because of how popular it is. But it's impossible to deny how fun it is to use this camera. The fixed 23mm lens on this small of a setup is probably the most inviting form factor for making photos. This focal length is extremely versatile and the combination of the super small focusing distance is amazing. It's like a pseudo macro lens. The photos that I got from this camera are so sharp and the colors are so awesome. It's so easy to have this camera on hand because it's just a little bit bigger than anybody's smartphone. This little digital camera is the perfect balance for a tool for photographic journaling, social media content creating, and even professional level work. And we're definitely going to dive deeper into my opinion about the film simulations coming from my background and perspective of being a film photography addict, but that's not even one of my favorite things about the X100V. The colors, it's not my top thing. It's actually one of the problems and glitches about the X100V. We'll get into that later. Okay, so one of the downsides of having an APS-C camera like the Fujifilm X100V is that the bokeh is not going to be as impactful as its full-frame competitors. If you are someone who likes choices, I love how there is a lens modifier for a 50mm focal length. The 50mm lens converter is such a clutch addition to the system because it solves both problems of one, wanting a different look out of your camera, and two, wanting a little bit more bokeh. I love the different look that this lens converter can provide, plus the form factor and build quality of this addition to your Fujifilm X100V is amazing. I am aware that there is a 28 mil conversion, but I didn't get to play with it, but I've heard great things, but it's awesome that you could get three options, the 35, the 28, and the 50 for this super compact camera. And I know that a lot of people like to do street photography on the Fuji X100V. And with these options, it kind of pretty much takes care of all the camps and schools of thought about about what focal length is perfect for street photography. You don't even need to compromise on buying an X-T5 or an X-Pro3 unless you really want those things. But the X100V just by itself stock is so small and with those two lens conversions, it's kind of hard to pick anything but this system. And on that topic, I wouldn't host my photos with anybody else than the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Squarespace provides some of the industry leading tools for making a portfolio for photographers like us who want to be taken seriously. I recently renovated my website to be more focused on my documentary work. Squarespace allows a lot of customizability from their award-winning templates to something as simple as changing the background to black. I love how my website feels more mature and if I have any questions or problems, I know I can contact the 24-7 customer service to get myself squared away. You can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash chrischu. Use my code chrischu at checkout for 10% off your first purchase. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. All right, so day one of using the Fuji X100V. I like it so far. Favorite combo of mine is with the teleconversion lens to make this a 50 mil setup. Combined with the minimum focusing distance, it's pretty nice. I could get a lot of detail shots. I could see someone using this to kind of create a body of work that has a lot of nice detail shots for interiors or for brands, so that's awesome. Tomorrow, we're gonna be messing more with the Fuji recipes. Uh, I messed with some of the raw files from today and they were really nice. I kind of forgot how good uh, Fuji raw files are, so tomorrow we'll be messing more with the JPEGs, which is what this camera is more known for. The 
Okay, I love the film photography community with all my heart, and there are a bunch of golden characters in that space, but the Fujifilm community? is probably the best in the game. And I know this Fuji community is super tight because there's a literal network of folks who make camera profiles or film emulation recipes for these film fanatics who want to take part in this game but don't want to break the bank. And honestly, from a film junkie such as myself, that is a really cool thing to see. So I tried out some of these film recipes and do I think that they stack up to film? Uh... I mean, in all honesty, they're pretty good. I only tried out a couple that were already installed on my friend's Fujifilm X100V. I know that there are a ton left on the internet for me to try out. But I will say, though, that the only problem that I ran into was that when the profile was loaded up, when I was looking through the EVF, it just looked way too overcooked. So it was just kind of like composing with this overcooked image was just not really fun. So I kind of turned off some of these uh, presets sometimes. But I mean, other than that, when I imported it into Lightroom, the post work was really easy. I hardly had to do anything with it. And even with the raw files, the colors were so awesome to edit. I kind of do miss editing raw files after shooting so much film because, you know, there's not that much control in post. But with these Fuji raw files, holy crap. I forgot how good this camera was and how good these Fuji colors are. And also I miss shooting at an ISO over 800. Setting up your camera on a tripod all the time with a cable release is, um, not that fun. I know the majority of people who use these Fuji cameras love the JPEG straight out of camera and they don't really like to edit that much in post. And I totally get it. It makes sense for this system because I came from a Canon and Nikon setup. And have you ever shot JPEGs from those different camera profiles on those systems? They're trash. If color is what you prioritize in your photography, then the Fuji cameras are awesome for you. All right, so let's talk about my favorite characteristic of the X100V. It's not the colors, the ergonomics, it's nearly analog experience, or it's beautiful EVF. It's actually a glitch or imperfection when you're shooting at max shutter speed. The bokeh for some reason looks so weird. It's as if you like swung your camera left and right while taking a photo. The bokeh is just like streaking horizontally but I love it. So my favorite lens of all time is an old vintage Leica 35 millimeter Summicron. I did a review on that lens right here. Go ahead and click that link. And in that video, I point out that the bokeh looks very painterly and fish scaly. Like it provides a lot of character. It's by no means clinically perfect. And I feel like the bane of most digital solutions to photography nowadays are so sterile and perfect. Like, of course we want that for the most part, but sometimes character is what we need sometimes to kind of inspire some artistic creativity. The Fujifilm X100V, whether it was intentional or not, solves this problem by being broken. Okay, so overall, I really did enjoy my experience with this camera, but there are a few things that I would change, starting off with the addition of a D-pad. The Fujifilm X-T2 came with a D-pad, and it was really easy to access quick information, uh, like your film simulations, the drive modes, and all that stuff on the D-pad. The joystick was also on that camera, but the fact that it's only present on the X100V and no D-pad, I, I don't like that at all. Number two, I wish there was faster buffer. I don't know if it was just the memory card that I I was using but every single time i took a shot it like loaded for like a second and a half to two seconds and that's kind of slow and the third and last thing that i would upgrade on this x100 line for the next iteration is its evf i wish it was a higher resolution evf because i work with the r5 a lot for my professional work and that evf is beautiful the lcd on the x100 i wish it was brighter as well because sometimes when it was really bright outside i could hardly see jack and that's not a good thing either but i mean all in all would i recommend this camera to a film photographer or to any casual photographer wanting to make great colored photos Absolutely, 100%. Do I think that the film emulations stack up to actual film photography? It kind of comes close. There are some simulations that are really good out there and you kind of do have to learn a little bit of editing to kind of get it right on there. But for the most part, it's pretty good, especially for social media. But would I still recommend shooting film in 2023, even though this camera is so good for this year? absolutely the process of making photos through the film medium is still more rewarding than any digital camera out there but i get it the film prices are absolutely insane and in march they're hiking up 17 percent in the u.s and in japan they're going 40 percent wow that's just so bad thank you guys so much for watching this video i hope you guys liked it make sure you like subscribe and comment down below about your thoughts about this camera and how it stacks up to film photography we'd love to know your thoughts and until then, I will see you in the next video. Peace.